So after priming and giving each piece a quick spray of uh, grey paint as well, I've started with a very quick dry brush using just a cheap acrylic that I've got, light buttermilk. It's a very pale beige. I don't use it much because it's so pale, but on something like this, it gives a good contrast against the grey. So as you can see already, the dry brush just lightens up the grey that's on there and starts to pick out some of the details of the wood grain. It is quite bright at the moment but that's not a problem because I'm going to give it a wash after it's dried but I just wanted to show you that this is the starting point. I'll start to add more washes, I'll start to dry brush a bit more. I've at the moment just dry brushed all of the visible wood then it'll be uh, probably a couple of washes of um, something along the lines of uh, strong tone. I'll just see what I've got, some brown washes to try and bring some brown back into the wood. What I'd like to do eventually is to be able to have not only the wood looking like it's aged and dry, but then also some patches where it's slightly green, where there's sort of algae or mould growing on it. So I'll start that sort of like down the bottom by where the, where the ground meets the wood and where it would start to rot in real life. And what I might try to do as well is get some photos of what I'm using as inspiration. There's a fence nearby my house which is um, literally rotten through. And I'm using that as my inspiration. It's very grey, it's very green. Um, I don't believe it's ever been painted so it's sort of like natural finished wood. So I'll go ahead and finish all these off and then I'll come back soon with the next step. So I've applied the wash and given it a chance to dry. The wash was made from a mix of pretty much everything I could get my hands on, so I used, of course, regular non oil. I used some Army Painter Strong Tone, which is pretty much my, my go to wash with most things. Um, I used some blue ink. I used green ink. Um, I used red ink red tone wash and I use some glaze medium um, which I haven't actually got much left of. Um, I chucked everything I could in there just to give it a sort of um, a slight difference. I didn't want to do it in Agrax because, no sorry not Agrax, non oil because that's too black um, and I didn't really want to waste all my strong tone on it so you can see in the cap there it's, it's, a, it's a brown wash but it is thinned slightly by the glaze medium so that it doesn't apply too thick. Um, you could, if you wanted to, stop there or give it another dry brush just to sort of like lighten the spikes a bit. Um, I think what I'm gonna do actually is go a little bit further. Um, I might use my airbrush, but if I bring it closely, you can see the wash has picked out a lot of the detail in there and just made the wood look darker and dirtier. These are some bits that I, from the second kit I'm working on, and you can see the difference. Before and after the wash. These actually haven't been highlighted either yet, haven't been dry brushed, so they're very, very plain and boring. And what it does, it just helps bring it out. I've also, painted the um, grit on the base. I just do that using some cheap acrylic. This is a raw umber colour. Um, I got this from Hobbycraft. I think it was £2 or £4 for the whole pot. Um, and it's much cheaper than using your hobby paints. So I think my next step to try and get the finish I want is to use my airbrush just to sort of like try and darken the bottom half of the wall there. And that'll just be with a succession of probably greens and browns to try and bring out some dirt and make it look a bit more, a bit more scabby. So I'll come back after I've done that and I'll sort of explain what I did in a bit more so detail. So we're coming towards the end of actually painting the palisades now. And what I did last night, um, once I got all of the washes dried on everything, I ran um, some of this same colour, raw umber through my airbrush 
and just gave a little bit of a spray along the bottom of the front and the rear of the Palisades. This is just to give it a little bit of um, variation, make it look like it's dirty from the, um, from the bottom up. What I may try to do is go back in with a green wash and add some bits to try to look a little bit like some algae and mould. It's looking pretty effective. I did that on all of the wall sections, so if you were to get two together, not the best example, it's got a, a gate. If you got two together, you'd be able to see that they all roughly work the same. It does look quite good when you have the gates together and you've got a sort of similar effect across them. But that didn't take long at all with the airbrush. I say probably about about 20 minutes to half an hour and most of that was because I was using a new type of airbrush itself so that took more longer to get used to than it would normally. So the next step, which I've actually gone ahead and done on um, the watchtowers, is to actually start dry brushing some of the details. So if I move this a bit, you'll be able to see at the top that I've dry brushed the horses' heads to bring out the detail. And to do that, I just used Vallejo model colour off-white. It just makes it look as if they've been painted before and they're slowly flaking away. I also went over the tops of the stakes here a bit just to give them a little bit of contrast. Um, I went over a couple of other bits on the here as well just to sort of like try to bring out some of the wood grain. But overall it's looking it's the inside. It's looking very good. Once that's done on everything, I'll then start looking a bit more at the detail. So, for example, on these palisades, on the towers, sorry, the bell, some of the rope that ties together the ladders there, the rope which holds on the top of the bell. <coughs> um, I did the same with this as well, and I've dry brushed the tops. Did a little bit of dry brushing on the back here as well. I'll need to go and paint the gate furniture, the hinge furniture even. I had a bit of trouble with this one actually because one of the, the pins broke, so I had to take it, take the whole thing out and replace it with another one. You get plenty of spares, so you can do that. Once that's done, it will be on to a case of getting the bases finished. I still can't get over how cool these look. I might try and get a couple of shots and just throw some... I oh don't know, I've put all my Rohan in the box for the game. No, that's alright. Um, so once I've finished this, I'll come back and I think the next step will be base coating the details. So I'll come back and I'll show you how I do that very soon. So this part of the video is actually going to conclude the painting segment. After this, it will be very much just about the um, basing for each of these pieces. So. Since the last um, part of this video was filmed, I've done a bit more work on um, finishing off the Palisades and the Watchtowers. So if we look at the Palisades first, because they're the simplest, um, following putting on the weathering effect at the bottom of the wall there with the airbrush, I went back over with some green wash, very, very thin down. And you kind of see patches of green here and there on the walls, just to sort of try and break up the colours that are already on there. It works well because it looks a bit like an algae um, even maybe. Just gives it a little bit of extra interest from a distance. Um, I did go back across the tops with another dry brush of white just to sort of try and break up the fact that the algae didn't look right on the actual the, the points of the stakes themselves. Um, other thing I've done just to finish it off, a couple of things. I have painted and washed the rope ties or the rope there so I used the Vallejo Game Colour Extra Opaque Heavy Brown and once that was dry some Army Painter Strong Tone 
just to give it a little bit of depth. I could have highlighted them a bit further, but there's no point um, for something like this. On the gate, I have I mixed together um, Vallejo's game color Brassy Brass and some black, and that turned it into sort of a very dark brown color with a metallic finish to it, but still very dark. After that was dry, I added on some highlights in pure pure silver, just picking out the rivets on each of the um, the hinges and sort of like a couple of scratches and knocks here and there just to try and make it look a little bit more realistic Maybe. yeah you see what I mean just adds a little bit of extra interest to the piece so oh, wrong way excuse me so once these are done which they pretty much are now I'll be focusing on basing them so for basing, um, along the front I'm thinking quite sort of like thick, lush, long grass um, because you're not going to get much traffic along the front of the wall here and there's nothing growing over or overhanging the top to stop the grass from growing. On the areas where you've got the gate, I'll probably leave that barren as it is because of course you're going to get a lot of traffic in and out. On the reverse side, as you can see there, right, the way the light is being cast onto the ground here, um, I'm not going to put much grass on this side simply because if you're playing on this terrain you won't see it and also the sun would be blocked from actually shining onto this area so you wouldn't really get much in terms of growth. Maybe a couple of weeds and a couple of patches of grass but not a lot at all. So that's all of the Palisades finished. Um, I've had them out and I've put them on the floor and I've set them all up and they, they do look amazing. You can get a pretty sizeable um, fortress out of two packs. Um, you can always decide if you want to ignore the fact that there's a gate there. If you wanted to just pretend it was another bit of wall and just have the one gate. But overall they're very, very versatile kits. Moving on to the watchtowers. Um, these require a little bit more extra effort. Um, I've gone across over the rope and the rope all on the ladder. Let's see if I can get a zoom in. Let's show you this one. Gone over the rope on the ladder with the same colour, the heavy brown, and then given it a wash of strong tone again. Very basic on this just because it doesn't really require a lot of effort. Some green washes have gone on as well just to add a little bit of extra um, interest. I put some green washes inside as well, as you can see kind of in the corner, just to give the illusion of some algae or mold. Um, didn't mean to put green washes on the top of this horse here. That's a bit frustrating. May need to re, may need to re dry brush it, brush it, I don't know, might not bother. Just adds a little bit of extra interest. Um, one thing I am very happy with is the effect that I got on the bell and both bells actually have come out very very nicely so I used the same mix of brassy brass and black as I did for the gate furniture I then got a torn up piece of sponge and I went over it first off with the brassy brass just dabbing very lightly dabbing onto the um, the bell itself I then went over with some green. Uh, I think it might be, yeah, it's a Vallejo game color goblin green. So it's pretty much, I, I never use this color at all, but it is pretty much a copy of the old Games Workshop goblin green. <clears throat> I didn't apply much at all, and it's only if you look very closely that you can actually see there's any green in here. Um, I didn't want to put too much on, but I just wanted it to look a little bit more interesting. And then using exactly the same method, um, I added some silver over the top just to dull back the brass that was on there. And all in all, it's come out very nicely. It looks very real. It looks metal, although it's plastic. So I'm very, very happy with that. Um, final steps were just picking out details on the rivets just to try and make it look a little bit more interesting. They bothered to put the details on the model, so I should bother to paint them really. And I guess that's the problem with this kit, 
is that they've gone to such a high level of detail that you could, if you wanted to, sit there and highlight each individual element of the ladder itself, when really you don't need to, but it's there, and so it makes you think, oh, maybe I should. But I've, um, yeah, I've blathered on for enough now. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do some basing, and then I'll talk you through how I base these as well. So again, thanks for watching, and I should be back shortly. So now everything's finished, we're going to come on to actually basing these pieces. Because they're club terrain, and they're going to be used a lot, and they're going to get probably battered around and thrown into boxes when it's all finished with, um, I'm not going to go too over the top, um, simply because when I do that, it all just falls off. No matter how much I seal it with watered-down PVA, a little bit of wear and tear is more or less guaranteed. The first things that will start going on bits like this are the edges, anywhere where there's any overhanging sand, that can chip off very, very easily. So what I'll be doing is I'll be basing them up in a, like a fairly simple fashion, um, but before I do anything, I'll just run through the sort of like basic materials that I've got, because I've realized that looking through the cupboard, I've got a lot of basic material. So a couple of pieces I've not actually tried yet. They're from Luke's APS. I bought these because I, I really do want to give them a go, but I don't want to open them and waste them. So partly because I'm kind of saving them for something, I don't know why. So I got the mid green flock two in one, and I got the bright green flock two in one. And I was actually relatively fortunate. Um, when these arrived, I looked at the size of the two bags and I thought there's not a lot in this mid green bag, whilst there is a lot in the bright green bag. So have I been shortchanged on the mid grip? So I sent Luke um, a message on Facebook and I asked him about it. And actually it turns out I got double what I should have done in the bright green. So uh, shouldn't complain about that really. Um, I got some mid green clump foliage, which is, um, it looks like rubberized foam mixed with paint. It looks really nice. Um, it will form nice hedges or bushes. Um, around the bottom of the any terrain, but I've not actually opened those. I've got some reindeer moss, lichen as it's called. These boxes I got from Hobbycraft, they were £2.50 each, whereas if you walk down the model aisle, uh, the woodland scenic stuff is about £17 a bag. The colours are probably slightly better on the woodland scenic, because um, this green can be very bright, Although these have dried out quite considerably now. But still they add a nice sort of like detail to models and these look a bit more like dead hedges than they do anything living. But they just provide a little bit of extra extra detail on the bases. I've got some real old fashioned green sawdust. Um, which, to be honest, I bought this donkeys years ago, um, not really thinking about what I would use it for. Actually, it's been most useful for um, putting on cheap trees that I've bought on eBay, just to make them look a little bit more realistic. It works exceptionally well on fir trees because it's such a dark green. I've got... So what have I got in here? I've got... This is a static grass. That's two millimeter dead grass, which I sometimes put through the static grass applicator. This is curry powder, no. Four millimeter summer grass, so that's a little bit longer. It, that forms quite nice, um, nicely when you're using a static grass applicator because it's a little bit longer. In here, I've got a mix of just about everything and this is probably what I'm going to use on this stuff in there I've got sort of two millimeter grass I've got, uh, got yeah two millimeter, millimeter dead grass the uh, four millimeter summer grass there's some uh, I think there's coffee grounds in there I know I've definitely used them and stuff like this before there's some tiny little wood chips there's some little rocks there's a bit of everything really and 
I'm more than likely going to use this because it's just a random blend of stuff. Then moving on from that sort of thing, I've got quite a few tufts. This is the sort of thing I save for my own bases and my own models because they're not cheap. Um, these are from oh, what's it? Oh, War Painter. Well, these actually these are gamers grass tufts. Um, War Painter flowers. They are really like the War Painter flowers are really good because they're actually very very uh, sturdy. They're quite hard to get off the paper. And in here I've got more. These are tufts I've made myself actually with PVA glue. And I've just got some generic wall painter. I can't remember if this is swamp green or dead summer grass. I can't remember. I prefer when I put grass on to bases, I prefer it to be darker rather than very, very bright green. And then in here, these. I definitely won't use these because this is stuff I've been using on my own models and I've only recently got it. This is 12mm Gamers Grass Tufts. And what's nice about these is that they are so tall that if you have a model in here it comes up to sort of like their knee. So it really looks like there's some tall bushes around them or the grass is really long. So, as I said, what I'm probably going to do is just use the basic mix I've got. I'm going to dab some PVA glue over this and I'm going to spread the mix on. Um, what I might try to do, I might try to put some of the 4mm grass along the fronts of the Palisades just to give it a lot more luscious look, but this is going to be my base and that's going to be the majority of what I'm using. So I'll stop up here and I'll come down after, come back after I've done a couple of pieces so you can see how it goes. Hi everyone, so after about Two weeks of working on these, I'm going to call them done now. Two weeks ago I opened the first box and assembled it all. I then started to spray it and paint it. And a couple of days later I decided it would be more efficient to do everything at once. So I eventually caught up, had two sets on the go at once. And have finished them as of last night. So following on from the end of the last snippet. Um, I've completely based these. I've done the walls, I've done the um, towers, and they're all done. I used, in essence, three different materials for the basing. I used my static grass, like sort of combination flock, if you will, which is this at the end here. Now, this is, you can't really see without the light. Just give you a bit of a zoom. This. <clears throat> This is a mixture of two mil dead grass. I believe there might be some four mil dead grass or four mil summer grass in there, but there's not a lot. There's some little flakes of wood, which you can't, probably can't quite make out on the camera. Some small flakes of wood just to, they look a little bit like leaves, they're quite effective. And then there's coffee grounds in there, which almost look a bit like um, mud once you've got them on the base. So that was the first thing to go down and I effectively just dipped the whole base into the mixture, sprinkled some over the top, shaked off quite a bit and then left it for a little while. I then came back with the 4mm summer grass. This stuff's quite a bit longer. I used my static grass applicator for that. Now, I'm just going to take a moment to say the static grass applicator I've got is awful. I bought it off, um, I think I might have got it for Christmas last year actually. It came from a company, I believe it's called Hobby King, and it is quite clearly a mosquito swatter that has been repurposed. So someone's decided they can try and make some money by buying those cheap mosquito swatter, swatters, cutting them up, and then selling them for £25 each. It's, a da it's dangerous. Um, the wiring's rubbish, the switch doesn't work. Once it's on, it's on, even if it says off. I think actually the switch says off or no, which is reassuring. Um, it even says on the handle um, this direction for hitting mosquitoes or something like that. It's really that bad. It has given me a couple of nasty shocks um, when I've accidentally touched the metal without thinking that it was on. Um, it almost feels like being punched right in the sternum, so it's quite a jolt. It's got D-sized batteries in it, so it's got quite a lot of energy coming out of it. 
but it does produce a nice result and it works better than just sprinkling the static flock onto there. It's not great when you've got an angle like this and you can't really get the um, the edge of the applicator into the wall. So it's not brilliant, but it does the job. Um, I then went back and I added some clump foliage, which you can see here. This is stuff from um, Woodland Scenics. It's just a basic clump foliage. I could have done it with the Luke's APS stuff I've got, but as I mentioned in the last segment, I'm kind of saving that for my own models. I made sure to leave a little bit of dirt as you go through the gates, just to add that little extra bit of realism. And I've done the same on both sides of the wall, just ever so slightly a little bit less summer grass on this side because if you imagine that the sun doesn't shine on that bit you're not going to get much in terms of summer grass growth or even luscious green grass i did exactly the same for the watchtowers you can see the basic short brown mixture around the bottom here some of the wood chips make it look a bit more like dead grass and then you've got the longer summer grass. Mm -hmm. I could have gone a bit more and done a bit more on top and tried to really bulk it out, but for sitting in a club cupboard for 360 days of the year, it's going to be fine like this. In all, I've got two sets, £80 worth, if you were to buy it from Games Workshop. Um, these came from Dark Sphere. And I believe we got these, I think they, once the independent retailer discount is taken into account, I think they're £32 each, which is quite a sizable difference if you want to assemble this sort of size fortress. And in general, they're just, they're amazing. They're great kits. You could make them yourselves easily with um, either kebab skewers or small dowels, but this does it all for you. There's no need to worry about what you need to add and what you need to sort of like height wise and everything. You just glue it together, paint it. I've tried to keep the paints <clears throat> as cheap as possible and as simple as possible so people can follow along. If this has been useful, um, let me know in the comments. It would be nice to get any feedback on these. Um, as I said, it's taken me just over two weeks. I'm very impressed with the amount I've been able to do. But also, it just is testament to the actual quality of the kits that you can paint them to what I see here, and don't not blow my own trumpet to a, a very good standard in two weeks. If you were hosting a tournament and you wanted two or three tables like this, you could easily bash out like four, six, eight kits in a number of weeks, and you don't even have to put this level of detail. So they really are very good. Um, I'm going to finish off the series here. Next we'll be looking at the Rohan houses, I've got five of those, so they're going to be the next project. Um, these are going to go in a box. If anyone is attending the um, it's the Not GT, so um, it's the event being held at the Epping Scout Hut in March, I can't remember if it's the 6th or 7th March. It's being held the same, um, it's the, sa the Saturday of the same weekend of the Warhammer GT. So we knew quite a few people who didn't get tickets and Josh thought, you know what, we'll hold an event at Epping. So this set will be making its debut there. <coughs> um, so really looking forward to getting this on the table. Um, it's not gonna be as competitive as the Warhammer World GT. So I really hope we'll be able to set this up and have a proper fight on it. And like maybe even some siege, siege equipment, some siege rules, I don't know. But I'll try and get some decent photos of this and add them on to the end of the series just so you can see what it looks like. But again, really happy with these and I hope you've all enjoyed it. So thanks for watching and I'll speak to you soon.